Jamie, let's go. Hi friends, my name is Tom Rand. I am the pastor at Sylvania First United Methodist Church, and it is my privilege to have served as Bill Ward's pastor uh, for the last five years. Uh, he was a gift to me and a gift to this community, and I know he was a gift to you in many other different kinds of ways. I welcome you to this service. Uh, obviously, this is different from uh, the way that, uh, that we would traditionally meet, uh, but it is a way that we can all gather safely. And so I thank you for your patience as we've tried to get the technology uh, working seamlessly or as seamlessly as possible so that everyone uh, can have a seat at the table and have a sense of being present here as we celebrate his life. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. He said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died and behold, I am alive forevermore. Because I live, Jesus promised you also shall live. Friends, we have gathered here to praise God and to bear witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of William Francis Ward. We come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss. May God grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow, hope, in death, resurrection. Will you pray with me? O oh God, who gave us birth, you are ever more ready to hear than we are to pray. You know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Give to us now your grace that as we shrink before the mystery of death, we may see the light of eternity. Eternal God, we praise you for the great company of all those who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labor. We praise you for those dear to us whom we name in our hearts before you. Especially we praise you for Bill, whom you have graciously received into your presence. To all of these grant your peace. Let perpetual light shine upon them and help us to believe where we have not seen that your presence may lead us through our years and bring us at last with them into the joy of your home not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'd like to invite you to join me in Psalm 23. It should be coming up on your screen, uh, and uh, I invite you to, to join me in saying this ancient psalm of the faith. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I want to turn now to Aunt Martha, who uh, comes to share with us a, a witness about the early life of Bill Ward. Good afternoon and welcome to the memorial and celebration of life for Bill Ward. First picture, please, the family. I would like to introduce you to my family. But my mother, Hazel, father, James, sisters, Mary, Sarah, Bill, 
and me holding the red purse. I want you to keep in mind this picture, I'll mention it later on, of the difference in size of Bill and myself. We lived in Akron, Ohio, which is the tire capital and the home of the Soapbox Derby. It started in Dayton in 1934 and moved to Akron the next year. They first competed on Talmadge Avenue. Coincidentally, our house was off Talmadge Avenue. They later moved it to the Akron Derby Downs racetrack. Youngsters would build cars out of orange crates and rickety wooden soap boxes that gave the race its name. They were unpowered and relied completely on gravity. One of my childhood memories is going to the top of that Talmadge Avenue with Bill and our sleds. We sled, we sled down the hill, screaming and laughing. We had a lot of fun, but I can't imagine our mother letting us do something like that with all the traffic. Each 4th of July, we would sit on the roof in the back of the house and watch fireworks displayed at the Firestone Country Club and Golf Course where Bill was a caddy. Bill liked to tease me. He made some stilts and asked me if I wanted to try them out, my first experience. So he leaned them up on the side of the garage, helped me get on them. And when I looked up, he was out of sight. I'm sure I called his name loudly and clearly. And I don't know the rest of the story. Bill had several jobs as a teenager. He worked in a local drugstore, he mowed lawns, and he was a caddy at the Firestone Country Club, and he had a paper route. And Dad and my Bill would get up early in the morning and go downtown to get the papers. He liked to sing and was in the North Hill Methodist Boys Choir. Now focus back on the family picture you saw earlier. Bill enjoyed introducing me to people by this is my older sister, Martha. After a while, I got tired of it. So I thought I would get a way to get back at him. His family had a surprise 70th birthday for him in St. Sylvania. So I went early with my clipboard and affidavit for people to sign. This is how it read. The undersigned being of sound mind and do hereby declare that William Francis Ford is definitely, honestly, and certainly five years older, underscored, than his younger sister, Martha Ward Pelletier. Not a lot of signatures. And I had gathered up pictures to prove my point and just tried to do the introducing faster the next time it happened. Around Mother's Day, my daughter Karen and I went up to Lake Gary to bird watch. That is when the warblers and other birds are migrating. People from all over the states crowd around the boardwalks. When a special bird is spotted, someone in the crowd shouts it out. And it's fun to see 20 or more people raise their binoculars simultaneously. On Saturdays, Karen went birding all day with relatives from Chilla Coffee, and Bill and I spent the day together. He took me to a couple spots to find a special bird. And we went, then we went back to the mail, motel, and I tried one more time to win at cards. It just didn't happen. I don't know how he knew what cards I had. In the evening, we all went out to eat at his favorite Italian restaurant. Bill was a caring person and liked to do things for people. When our house in what's now Liberty Township, there was a, no gas line. The driveway is 500 feet long and we had plenty of volunteers come to help, many relatives. And of, of course, Bill was there. We probably had a traditional water balloon fight during the day. Keith managed to find a garbage can lid for protection. After our father had a stroke, there were many things for us to do. Eventually, we moved them closer to me. Whenever I needed advice on anything, Bill always helped me. If necessary, he would come to help, never hesitating. He installed an electric air cleaner at my condo. 
He would fix things here and there in the condo. He organized a surprise, a surprise birthday party for me at the Houston Inn in Lebanon. I miss talking to him on the phone and often texting back and forth. I'm looking forward to what you have to contribute to this service. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Aunt Martha. Uh, earlier, uh, before you all joined us, uh, I asked if I could adopt her as, as my Aunt Martha, and she said yes, <laughs> and I'm so grateful because uh, the, those stories that you told are, are very endearing. So thank you very much uh, for, for sharing. I want to offer you a scripture from the 14th chapter of John's Gospel. Jesus was at the table with his disciples for the last time, and he said this to them, anticipating his own death. Don't be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. My Father's house has room to spare. If that weren't the case, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will return and take you to be with me so that where I am, you will be also. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. I want to invite uh, Bill Eicholt, a longtime friend, in to, to share some memories as well. Good afternoon. My name is Bill Eicholt. I would like to thank Keith for the opportunity to say a few words about my friend, Bill Ward. Bill had a lot of friends as he had a charismatic personality and found it easy to start relationships. That may be one reason why he was a successful salesman. From my personal perspective, I think you can go through life and have a lot of acquaintances, many of whom are friends. In my adult life, with the exception of my wife and family, Bill was my best friend. Bill, Bill and I go back to the late 1970s when we met on Tom Farrow's, Farrow's sailboat for a guys only overnight excursion to Putin Bay. After that, I worked on some occasional legal projects for Bill and he became my heating and air conditioning professional. As time went by, our relationship went beyond business and became social as well. We became friends. Our friendship lasted over 40 years. Bill is my true best friend, and I told him that many times. He was one of those guys who would give you the shirt off his back. He would be the first to admit that he wasn't perfect. I can say he was generous, charming, funny, friendly, and loyal. He could also be a little bit abrasive, difficult at times, and cranky. Bill was also extremely competitive. He loved to play cards, but he loved winning at cards more. This is somewhat of an aside, but after high school, Bill enrolled in the Ohio sports, I'm sorry, Ohio State University and majored in poker and gin. At that time, poker and gin were not accredited at Ohio State and Bill subsequently entered the United States Army where he was on the competitive rifle team. He further honed his poker and gin skills in the Army, which supplemented his income, I believe. In the late 1990s, or early 2000s, he and I were golf partners in the Sylvania First United Methodist Church Golf League. I was already in the league and he wanted to play, so we joined forces. In order to try to get an edge, he liked to needle the opponents to try to get them off their game. More than often, that did not work. I can say he must have been better at cards than he was at golf. He gave up golf. He didn't like to lose. A true friend is someone who is there for, there for you when you need help. 
Bill went out of his way to offer assistance to me and many other people, but to me whenever I needed it. And I tried to do the same for him. I had hip replacement surgery almost two years ago and my wife had to babysit and was unable to be with me at the surgical center. Bill was with me all day. That's what a friend does. We would have telephone conversations close to every week. When he would call, he would say, WC, this is WF. When I would call him, I would say, hi, Wild Bill, this is Buffalo Bill. Bill was also a fighter. He probably knew his health wasn't going to hold up, but that was not going to keep him from going to his bridge games and to the University of Toledo women's basketball games. For the last 13 or 14 years, he and I attended virtually every Lady Rocket home basketball game. We had season's tickets. We were also members of the Igniters, the University of Toledo Women's Basketball Fan Club. Bill actually served on the Igniters board at one point. Although he was a graduate of the of Akron University, he was a loyal Rocket fan even when we played Akron. For the last couple of seasons, Bill was really struggling physically and could barely stand up for the national anthem. But stand up he did, and as an army veteran, he saluted the flag during the anthem. And Martha just mentioned that he loved to sing. He loved to sing the anthem at the basketball games. He wore his army veteran ball cap with pride. I'm going to miss him at club functions and games. The seat to my left will be vacant or occupied by somebody else, but I'll feel his presence. Despite being an obvious intense pain, he was barely able to walk 30 yards without getting out of breath. Bill never gave up living his life to the fullest. He appreciated every moment he had, and he had never, ever lost his sense of humor. I miss Bill a lot, but I'm very thankful for 40 years of friendship. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bill, for a wonderful, heartfelt sharing of uh, your experience of Bill and your friendship and, and walking together in so many different ways. Uh, at this time, we're going to sing a hymn, How Great Thou Art. The words will be coming up on the screen for you.
to turn now to Keith to share some words of memory and witness. Uh, I want to thank you all for being here. My dad would have loved seeing you all together. My Aunt Martha talked a little bit about my dad at a young age, so I thought I'd kind of continue from there. And I think Bill did a good job of covering Ohio State in a better way than I probably would have had my dad's service in, in the Army. So work and a hard work ethic were really important to my dad. He started his career as a buyer and manager of department stores in Cleveland and Toledo. And in the mid-70s, he transitioned his career to the heating, ventilation, and cooling field as a salesman and eventual business owner of a small company he started called Cherry Hill Heating and Cooling. And I want to, you know, build on what Bill said. This was a huge transition in his career, and he was a fighter. Um, he had to completely retool all his, you know, knowledge and skills, but he was a salesman and a businessman, so it was a good fit for him. He was so proud of Cherry Hill, and he built it from scratch. He was known as a trustworthy businessman who cared about his customers and a job well done. Throughout his life, my dad was passionate about many things. Uh, as Bill said, he loved to play cards and also Aunt Martha, and he was really tough to be. He played gin and bridge and poker. When he played poker here in Seattle, he would usually make a killing on me and my friends. And we still use some of the terms that he would say as we play today. I'm sure that many of you have been on the losing side of playing against him. And several of you, I know, have beat him. And then we like to razz him about. I would keep a photo of a score from Jin and occasionally text it to him just to egg him on. Uh, he also loved boating and had three different power boats over 50 years. Many of us here today spent time with him fishing for walleye or perch on Lake Erie. And some of us were also towed back in when the engine would break down and he couldn't fix it. He most enjoyed being on the water with a friend or family member with a fishing pole and an ice cold beer in hand. I think some of you know he had a habit of always ordering a glass of ice at a restaurant and pouring the beer over the top of the ice. That's the, he's the only person I've ever seen do that. Um, his love of boating and helping others led him to the Toledo Power Squadron, which is an organization that teaches safe boating courses across the country and also in Toledo. 
He taught all the courses and then moved on to leadership roles and eventually became the commander of the organization in 1980. He was very proud of his work with the organization. At the age of 44, he fell in love with downhill skiing and about the same time he started his worldwide travels, including trips to Jamaica, England, Germany, Thailand, and Afghanistan. He in, really enjoyed these trips and told lots of stories about him. Uh, Jamie, can you put up the photo real quick? So my dad had some wonderful traits and some that could have been reformed a bit. And I think Bill and, and uh, my Aunt Martha talked about that a little bit. He worked hard no matter what he was doing. He also could build or fix just about anything. He volunteered at my preschool to fix broken toys each week. And he enjoyed installing and fixing hot water tanks, gas lines, and furnaces for friend and family. He could be a, impatient sometimes and was not always the best driver, especially on the freeways around Ohio and Michigan. He had this habit of looking to his right and glaring at anyone that was in his way in the left-hand lane as he passed them. And we coined this as the DDL, or dad's dirty look. Of course, he was immensely proud and sometimes would ask me, was that a DDL, as he zoomed by someone and glared at them to the, to the right. Lastly, my dad was a people person. He really enjoyed being with and talking with others and helping friends and family. I'll bet many of you were helped by my dad in some way. These past six months, I've had some time to think about what I miss most about my dad. I'll miss his infectious smile and sense of humor. I'll miss his stories. And lastly, I'll miss him as my good friend. Thanks. Thank you so much, Keith. I want to share with you one more scripture from the 25th chapter of Matthew, beginning with the 31st verse. Jesus said, now when the human one comes in his majesty and all his angels with him, he will sit on his majestic throne and all the nations will be gathered in front of him and he will separate them from each other, just as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right side, but the goats he will put on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, come you who will receive good things from my father, inherit the kingdom that was prepared for you before the world began. For I was hungry and you gave me food to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothes to wear. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then those who are righteous will reply to him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you a drink? And when did we see you as a stranger and welcome you or naked and give you some clothes to wear? When did we uh, see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will reply to them, I assure you that what you have done for one of the least of these brothers or sisters of mine, you have done it for me. This is the good news of Jesus Christ, and we can trust it. So, You've heard much about Bill's life growing up, his friendships and his family. I'd like to share with you what I've observed about his faith. It wasn't long after I arrived at Sylvania when Bill was in my office wanting to talk with me about his experience on an Emmaus walk. An Emmaus walk, for those of you who may not know, is a weekend spiritual retreat built around the themes of Jesus uh, walked to the village of Emmaus with his disciples after his resurrection, recounted in Luke chapter 23. For many people, I think Bill included, the walk to Emmaus is often the first time that they meet God in a deeply personal and intimate way. For most people, even those in the church, God can be a concept an idea, someone out there who vaguely cares about us, who is powerful enough to create the world, but who is often understood as living far away in heaven, somewhat disconnected from the realities of everyday life on earth. God, we sometimes think, is a being beyond us to whom we can turn when we get in trouble and ignore when things are going well. 
or at least that's what the popular conception of the divine is like. The great gift that Bill received at his Emmaus walk was not only the knowledge, but also the experience that he was known fully and loved completely by God. There's nothing he could do to earn it. That grace and love were there long before he was born. They were there all during his life, even when he wasn't aware of it. The gift of faith is coming to realize that you are loved completely for who you are. It means you don't have to pretend anymore. You don't have to try to impress God or prove that you're somehow worthy of God's love. It's just there. That's the kind of faith Bill encountered and embraced on his Emmaus walk and carried with him in his life at church. When he stepped into my office that day, he was so energized, so alive with the experience. His eyes were afire with the light that came from deep within and a fiery longing to share that experience with anyone who could receive that gift. From the Emmaus community, Bill learned about another ministry outreach called Kairos. Kairos is a Greek word that means time, but it isn't just chronological time that we measure in hours, minutes, and seconds. It is a word that means God's time. As Galatians 4.4 says, in the fullness of time, in God's time, God sent his son Jesus, the Christ, to live among us. Kairos ministry is an outreach from Emmaus to those who are doing time. Prisoners who may be counting days or months or even years until they get a chance to get out. Kairos reaches out to those who are in prison with a simple message. Now is the time. This is God's time. You don't have to wait to find freedom. God wants to set you free from your past right now. There's no better time than the present. Bill was passionate about Kairos and as he was about Emmaus, and it gave him a great sense of purpose to organize cookie baking at the church so that those bringing the Kairos message could invite the inmates to taste the sweetness of God's love for them. As Psalm 34 says, taste and see that the Lord is good. In Matthew 25, Jesus tells a parable about how judgment will happen in the end, how God will know not just from what we say with our lips, but by how we live our lives. In the parable, Jesus says he will separate the sheep from the goats, and the king will say to the sheep, Come, you who will receive good things from my father. Inherit the kingdom that was prepared for you before the world began, because I was hungry and you gave me food to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then those who are righteous will reply to him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we, when did we uh, see you as a stranger and welcome you or naked uh, uh, and give you clothes to wear? When did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will reply to you, to them, I assure you, I assure you that as when you have done it to one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you have done it for me. In his waning years, Bill found his great joy in sharing life with those in prison. And that's how I know he knows Jesus. He met him not only on a walk to Emmaus, but also by caring for the least of these. Now, during this same time, Bill was also having heart trouble. The first time I met Keith was, in fact, visiting Bill at St. Luke's Hospital. In his last years, his heart was constantly giving him trouble as Bill was telling us about earlier. It was also a source of bonding for us after I had my heart attack. He was one of the most compassionate 
and caring for me when I returned to the church. He understood in his body and in his heart what I had been through. I will never forget his simple words of faith and of encouragement for me when I would get down. Bill rarely missed church. Unless he was sick or out of town, he was here, and usually one of the first ones here, too. He would come early and then sit in the gathering space by the host or hostess, whoever was serving for the day, and he would drink coffee and tell stories and listen to stories. My, he loved those stories. Before long, others would come and join him in the corner laughing and sharing tales of adventure. Yet, while some might linger over coffee, Bill was also early to rise from there and make his way into the sanctuary. He always sat into, in the second to the back pew on the center inside aisle. That was his spot, and he wasn't going to cede it to anyone. His warmth and love was contagious in that corner of the church. I will miss his presence just there. In Psalm 23, the shepherd boy turned King David writes about what it is like to have God as a protector and guide. The Lord is my shepherd, he begins, I shall not want. If you read it closely, you'll notice that the first part of the psalm is warm and filled with gratitude, but God is referred to in the third person, a little more distant, maybe conceptual. It's about what God does for us. The Lord shepherds us, makes us lie down in green pastures, leads us beside still waters, restores our souls. But it's the second part of the psalm that David's voice changes. He no longer talks about God. He begins to talk to God. It's significant that uh, where the transition takes place, it is right where David says, even though I walk through the darkest valley, you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You set a table before me. You anoint my head. Surely your goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Psalm 23 describes well the journey of the well-lived life with God. Early on, we learn a lot of things about God. Later, and particularly through suffering, we learn to speak directly to God. And we learn that God has been there the whole time, just waiting for us to turn. That was David's story, and it's Bill's story. The great good news is that Bill came to know, uh, is that the life that Bill came to know with Jesus does not end with death. Love is stronger than death. Today he is at peace. And I am ever so grateful for the life and ministry of Bill Ward. Will you pray with me? God of love, we thank you for all with which you have blessed us even to this day, for the gift of joy and days of health and strength, and for the gifts of your abiding presence and promise in days of pain and grief. We praise you for home and friends and for our baptism and place in your church with all who have faithfully lived and died. Above all else, we thank you for Jesus, who knew our griefs, who died our death, and rose for our sake, and who lives and prays for us. As he taught us, so now we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I want to share with you a blessing of having been able to share this time with you. Great gratitude, and, and I, I ask for your forgiveness for the ways in which uh, things haven't been perfect, but we're trying by technology to be united in our hearts and united in our spirits all across the globe. And so I am, I am really grateful for this opportunity to, to share in these uh, words and in these moments with you. And so I just send you forth with a blessing. And I want to share with you the blessing that, that spoke deeply to Bill's heart. I, I speak it every week here at Sylvania First. And I want to share it with you as well, because it is a message that, that if you take it deeply into your heart, will change your life forever. Here it is, simply this. You are a blessed beloved, beautiful child of God in whom Christ dwells and delights. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we all live safely and securely in a kingdom that has no end. Go in peace. I'm going to pass this back to Keith, and he's going to give some instructions on how you can join in the celebration of life that is to follow. And I know there's been some frustration that some of you want to be able to talk to one another. That's where you can do it. Keith, over to you. Thanks, Pastor Rand. Uh, before we transition, I just want to thank my Aunt Martha and Bill uh, for putting so much time in, as well as Pastor Rand and Jamie. You can't see Jamie behind the scenes with uh, the Methodist Church in Sylvania for making this happen. So we really appreciate this. Um, so um, we want to transition to the celebration of life. Let me just kind of explain what this is going to be and how you get there. So the good news is if you've gotten here, if you can see me, you're there because you just basically need to repeat the process, go back to the email that you got and click on the celebration of life. What we're going to do is we're going to take about a 10 minute pause so I think it is, I'm out on the West Coast, so I'm going to try to transition this to East Coast. I think it's about 2 o'clock East Coast time. So at 2.10, uh, by 2.10, how about go, uh, join us on the celebration of life? And a friend of mine is going to facilitate this. We'll start with a short video. We'll kind of explain things when we get there. I would ask you, though, um, it's nice to have your video on so that we can kind of be more connected. So if possible. Turn your video on uh, when you join that meeting. Okay? Thanks again, and we'll see you in about 10 minutes. Bye, everyone.